everybody and welcome back to another Horse Productions video. As you can see we are in a slightly different setup today as I've got this rather large looking table as I'm going to be doing a slightly different video to usual as I'm going to be doing it unboxing because for some reason on the internet people like to watch other people opening cardboard and considering that this piece of merchandise is a rather exciting one that I've been waiting for for an incredibly long time I thought I would record it and generally show my reactions so this video is going to be filled with me going ooh and yay and ah whilst opening boxes with little pieces of plastic inside because hey that is the internet and that is why we've got it in our lives so today i'm of course going to be taking a look at the big chief studios one six scale collector figure of the one and only eighth doctor from of course the tv movie in 1996 now i do of course normally do product reviews of these products as i've done with all of my other big chiefs in the past when collecting i will still be doing a product review eventually of course these take quite a long time to review but i thought i would do a first reaction as I take a look at this rather lovely piece of cardboard with the Big Chief logo printed all over it. Just because this is still available to order on the Big Chief website, I do believe there is a few left uh, because it is a classic Doctor, it has sold out rather quickly so if you are a fan of this series I recommend buying it soon before it sells out entirely. So I'm now opening the box with some scissors as you can see. I, I honestly don't understand why these unboxing things are popular but hey I'm not going to argue with it, I'm just very excited to see the product on the inside. Not Big Chief have in fact um, changed the design of the box this time round, so that'd be rather exciting to see, because we've had a rather samey design on the past few products. Here we go, some lovely bubble wrap. Hopefully not from Kablam, because that bubble wrap explodes, and that isn't good. Inside we have the one and only 8th Doctor. I'm going to get them out of the way. I'm so excited for this product, not going to lie. Ooh. So we have of course on the front, just to flip that round so you can see it as well, we have of course the lovely Earth Doctor himself, the title, the TARDIS, nicely reflecting almost on a John Pertwee-esque background there, and of course the new series Doctor Who logo embossed on the front, it looks incredibly smart of course on the side, or in like that, we've got the Doctor Who logo once again, some lovely, not just embossed, but almost engraved Gallifrey text in there. If you rub your fingers along it, it actually is almost raised up above the cardboard, which is very cool. And then on the back, we get an image of the Doctor himself, of course, in his TV movie costume, which is very exciting. And of course, unlike the other boxes, oh, it says on the bottom here, this is unit 243 out of 250 signature will sell out before the regular one because they normally do naturally with it having Paul McGann's signature on the inside and of course just tilting off this it's very unusual having a different layout of box I'm normally just used to it pulling off like that so on the inside we have nothing isn't that exciting we have a white background thing and then of course on the inside of the box in fact I'll put that there you can tell I've not done this before can't you on the inside here, we've got more images of the Eighth Doctor, which are available to look at on the Big Chief website. And I do believe, from what I have heard, this is in fact the backdrop, uh, which was once upon a time on the inside of the lid. So this is slightly more flexible cardboard with the Doctor Who logo on. And then on the inside, we have some Gallifrey circles, because who doesn't want some Gallifrey circles in their life? That is rather new series and possibly hinting at the Time War, which is of course from the ending half, I suppose, of this Doctor's era, so it's nice to have something to display with him. And then we have the one and only Eighth Doctor himself. It is so nice. I missed out on the Fourth Doctor originally, so this is my second classic series Doctor, so it's great to finally be venturing once more into this era of the show, having collected, of course, all the new series Doctors beforehand. So just slipping this out. Ooh! So we have the base underneath, so that's kind of the same as how it used to be. Here we go. Nothing on the inside of there. There you go, just to show you, in case you think I'm lying. I don't know why it would be, but oh well. We have the box itself. This is a smaller tray, which does, of course, feature some things. We have what looks like a battery and the urn, which is, of course, the incentive one. The certificate of authenticity which this one, as it is the signature one, as you can see, we have the little protected sort of plate on the inside, the plaque, that's what it's called. I always live in fear of snapping one of the plaques because that would be a disaster, especially given that this is a signature edition. So tilting that off, we have, oh, I'm gonna slide this out and then put it back in just so it's safe. 
But there we have the one and only Paul McGann. I do already have a print of that, but I thought, you know what, considering I'm forking out for a big one six scale figure, I may as well get the signature one, so that looks very cool with the classic series Doctor Who logo on there. Of course, once again, you know, 243 out of 250. And then, of course, you do also get the Certificate of Authenticity as well, which is that. Ooh, lovely. It just basically just say, this is an officially licensed Doctor Who product. Well, it's even been written in silver pen. How lovely. We also have the tripod. Uh, we have some additional limb pieces, just in case they'll snap, which, not going to lie, none of them ever have on mine. They are quite strong and sturdy. And then we do also have in here as well. From what I understand, I've got no idea what that is. Oh yeah, I do have an idea of what it is. It is, of course, the Master's Urn thing, which, not going to lie, I can't really remember this from the movie. I know it's in the very beginning, but it's nice to have that. As you can see, it's almost like coggish and circular with a few little rims around the side and a little nodule at the top. So, of course, he does eventually break out of that. So, it's nice to see that that has been included, of course. Nothing in there, just to make sure. And then we have the base, which we will come back to in a bit, because we're here for the figure, obviously. So, I'm going to move them to the side. There we go. The base is exactly the same to all the other Doctors that we've seen so far in the line. In fact, all the other figures, in fact, from the Doctor Who series. So, taking a look at the Doctor himself, I'm very impressed. As you can see, I'm an amateur when it comes to unboxing. Yeah, more plastic. Woohoo! I love this bit because it's exciting. So, the costume is of course fully tailored to look as best as possible compared to the actual prop from the TV show. Or the costume, I suppose. It's got a bag over his head just to ensure that you can't breathe in the box. There we go, taking that off so you can breathe a little bit. Hey! That looks brilliant. I am happy, very happy. There we have the Doctor, the one and only. I'm really impressed with the tailoring, actually. Of course, the natural thing with these figures is that they do take a while to display right. You, of course, need to do a bit of work with the costume itself to ensure that it sits on the body correctly, because when you just have it in the box all stiff, of course, it doesn't really work well. You need to take some time. I have the new shoes at the bottom as well. There you go, Matthew Toffolo. Are you happy now? Of course, these needed to get re-sculpted because they were, I do believe, the 11th Doctor's shoes originally that were repainted. So we've got the new ones now, all new, that are more accurate to the ones I've seen within the TV show. And of course, naturally, they do fit perfectly. Looks very cool. I am very, very impressed. What else have we got in the box? Are you going to sit there or stand? I feel a bit nervous not having the base with it, but... There we go. We'll take a look at him in a bit more detail in a little bit. What else have we got in the box? We have many, many hands, as per usual, so you can, of course, naturally pose him with the different accessories. So we have, a, once again, a sort of more flexible plastic that has been used on these to ensure that the accessories can fit into his hand rather easily. These have been painted very nicely, actually. We have the inclusion of veins and things and all of the normal things you would expect on a pair of human hands. Some rather unusually sculpted ones. There's the one for the pocket watch, the infamous promo image when he's doing that, which is very cool. And then we get lots of other things as well to, of course, pause alongside this Doctor from the TV movie only. In fact, don't have any big finish accessories, which you can come to expect. So we have, what is this? We have the little bag of jelly babies, which is very nice. Of course, he does use these in the movie. I've even been sculpted on the inside a little paper bag. That is cool. He can sit there. What else do we have? We have the pocket watch, which, not gonna lie, I would have one of these in real life if. The sheer amount of detail on these, as you can see, we have an actual metal chain, with the actual clock face on as well. That's been nicely. It's actually a sticker, I think, or a raised up sticker, so it kind of looks like it's curved, like how you would expect on a glass sort of face on a uh, fob watch or whatever pocket watch. So that looks very nice. I have. I do believe a little sort of device that he uses in the story to, um, I think, stop them in. The clock going down in the, what's it, it's New Year in the movie. I've not watched it in a while, can you tell? I, I can't actually remember the last time I watched the movie. I probably will watch it in preparation for the actual review that will be coming in a few weeks. There you go, there's a little plug for you. So you have a little communicator device which has some plastic over the top, clear plastic, with almost like a little circuit on the inside, which looks very 
It's tiny, it's absolutely tiny, which is rather impressive once again for the scale of these figures. So I'm going to put that next to the fob watch so I don't lose it. But we have the TARDIS key, which is in fact sort of the more designed one with a little sort of rectangular arrow, I suppose, which once again this has been given a chain over the top to make it look authentic and in scale, I suppose, to the actual figure. So this, unlike the new series Doctors, it is of course normally a Yale key. This is a rather nifty little Gallifreyan one, which you can probably hardly see. It looks like I'm just dangling a little bit of metal in front of you. But it is a, a rather nicely detailed, we have a few little circuit things on the back, and then the triangular design, which once again, to be honest, considering it is this small, you know exactly what it is. It's um, very nicely detailed and sculpted, so that is a nice piece to go alongside him. Maybe, who knows, we might get an 8th Doctor Tardis one day, then you can sort of display him like he's about to open it. Next up we have some bigger accessories, like Sonic Screwdriver, which this is my first classic series Sonic as a part of this series, because I don't have the 4th Doctor as of yet. Uh, of course, Season 18, Tom is coming at the end of this year, or into early next, so that's got some rather nice detailing on with the emitter there at the very top, and the golden band as well, which that can fit into his hand, which we may as well do now, to give him a little bit of something to do with his life. I'm tilting that up. There we go. Probably need to put him on the other hands, to be honest. Because it does... There we go. He looks a bit confused, like what he's just found. He doesn't really know what it is. There we go. He's looking... He's holding the sonic screwdriver and looking a bit confused about life. Next up we have the magnifying glass, which I cannot recall what this actually did once again within the movie. A little bit of plastic that has been put over the top, probably in order to protect it during shipping. And intricately packed, I've noticed this. It's, um, of course, the other ones are just a tray with um, the, f the things in, which they can slide about on occasion, uh, especially with, say, the 10th and 9th Doctors. Uh, but with this, it seems like they've upped the production when it comes to the actual product. It certainly feels a lot more premium compared to some of the other releases, as much as I do like the other ones. Of course, sometimes the accessories did flow about a little bit, even if they were taped in. But this one, due to the way it's been set out, it does look a lot more secure. So there we have the magnifying glass. Yes, I did just check there to see if it actually worked. Uh, not going to lie, I probably couldn't tell with these glasses. Uh, but we have the little handle and the golden bit, which no doubt you could actually do some very fun shots with him holding that. But yeah, once again, it looks exactly like what it is meant to look like. But we have another thing, which... Oh, this is the yo-yo, of course. Very nicely detailed. We did get a yo-yo with Tom, and I do believe the Twelfth Doctor also has one as well, like a yellow one that he used in... I want to say Kill the Moon, because that's like the Moon episode, so it kind of makes sense for him to use it in that. But actually, in true Big Chief style, the yo-yo does actually have string on it, which is very, very fun. It's actually proper sort of string string this time, to look like one from the actual story, as opposed to a very thin, almost cotton-like cord. So you have a little bit of designing on this, which is a bronze colour this time round, and a little design that has been imprinted with a few spirals on it. Looking very cool, that can dangle in his hand. There we go. That was cool. Finally, for this box, from what I can see, I also need to check frequently to actually see that I've covered everything when it comes to opening these, because you don't want to lose any of these little accessories, because that would not be nice. We have... A, I want to say a tracker, it looks a bit key to time-ish. I know that you actually have the specifications on the box, which, come to think of it, is probably something that's quite good to look at. Accessories, sonic screwdriver, pocket watch with chain, bag of jelly babies, yo-yo, key uh, to the TARDIS on chain, magnifying glass, beryllium chip, that is what the small thing is. You have the magnetic clamp, which is what this is, because it looks it looks a bit like a magnetic clamp, doesn't it, I say, now that I know what it is. Um, it's rather... As I say, very key to time-ish in its design, like the key to time tracker. So we have a little nodule thing on the end, and then we have the more sort of dialish science fiction tracker-esque bit, I suppose, at the very end there. Which looks very cool, even a few bits of circuitry on the very back as well, which that can sit at the front. And I do believe that is it for the accessories. Excellent. So taking a look at the figure, uh, because he's the main focus, of course. Uh, I really do love, actually, because originally the likeness did come under a little bit of fire, as with all Big Chiefs, sadly. In fact, rather impressive. It is a reoccurring theme with Big Chief figures, where it looks a lot more impressive in real life, and once you've took actual care 
over the photos. Of course, the recent launch pad figures, such as Tom Baker, such as the Third Doctor, they've taken a lot of care in making sure the figures are posed right, especially in the more scenic pictures with a location in the background. So it is nice to see the Big Chief have started doing that because it does make the figure generally look a lot more natural. As you can see on the inside, we have the inclusion of the waistcoat, which has a very gorgeous patterning on. We have the buttons, of course, running down the middle, the cravat there as well, which has been given a rather silverish sort of finish. And then we have the, even the little inclusion of the button on there as well, holding it all together. And of course, the edges of the frilled shirt, which you can hardly see due to all of the lovely sort of clothing added over the top. And of course, we have the pockets on there as well, which if this follows the true style of Big Chiefs, Naturally, yep, the pockets do actually work, so you could probably fit the chain of the pocket watch in there if you wanted to be very precise. And of course, you have the inside of the lining as well, which is stunning. And once again, I would love a coat like this in real life. Of course, flipping around to the back as well, I'm not going to take this off fully because it will be a pain to get back on at the minute, but we have the sort of continuation of the waistcoat patterning on the back that is very similar, in fact, to the lining of the coat. And of course, we have on the back of the coat itself the inclusion even of the buckle, which has been nicely sculpted. From what I can see, in fact, a metal, so that's nice. There's also a few pockets on the back of the trousers as well. So taking a look at the likeness, because I've not really looked at it too much, uh, you can tell it's Paul McGann, definitely. The hair has been given a lovely sculpt. I really love the way it's been built up. It looks very natural. I love the fact that we have the curls around the front there as well. And you can certainly tell who it is meant to be. Of course, face on. Uh, sometimes on photos, they can look a bit questionable. However, I think in hand it looks brilliant actually. I really love the inclusion of the sort of stubble, I suppose, around the chin. And the paint application is really nice as well, especially around the eyes. It looks very natural. Of course, they do normally have that almost wet, glossy wash over the top to make it look natural. And that has certainly been applied there. Even a few red speckles around the side to give the indication of veins, which is very cool indeed. Of course, overall, it looks lovely. I really do like the neck join as well. That has been made a lot more hidden, I suppose, compared to some of the previous releases, because normally the line can be very, well, it can stand out quite a lot and can look a bit unpleasant. Some people Photoshop it out when they're taking sort of professional photos with it, which I don't blame them. Of course, we have the articulation as per usual, which I will be going over in the review itself. But overall, I am very, very happy. Of course, taking a closer look at the 8th Doctor and especially zooming in on some of those details, naturally, as I said earlier, these figures do take quite a while to put together when it comes to the outfit and making them look right in each individual pose. So as you can see here, of course, the lapels of the coat do stick out quite a lot. Naturally, when it comes to taking photos of this, normally collectors would take some time to then make it look more natural as opposed to bushing out at the side. However, not going to lie, I quite like this colour anyway, so I'm naturally probably going to want to expose it a little bit more than maybe some other people who would tend to want to keep it more stuck back into the coat itself. So the likeness overall, I think it definitely looks like Paul McGann. Of course, as I said, I'll be covering that in the review itself, but mainly focusing on the costume here. Some really lovely textures on this. I can remember actually touching the prototype coat at Birmingham Comic Con a number of years ago now, and the feel of it is really nice, incredibly high quality. And naturally as well, taking a look at the bottom where we have the trousers, which are very dad trousers in kind of colour to be honest and we have of course the shoes there at the bottom as well that are a rather glossy black looking incredibly smart indeed the main focus for me is certainly that waistcoat in the very middle some really lovely detailing on this especially the silver highlight running around the sides and I love the inclusion of the buttons as well that are actual plastic that have been glued or stitched on and then even the cravat as well naturally a similar thing with the first Doctor figure I advise keeping this in place as much as possible without taking it off completely disrupt how it looks on the figure and due to the size is of course quite hard to get back on correctly. Naturally he does have the sonic screwdriver there in one hand and of course the pocket watch in the other which this can connect if paused right with of course the pocket in the waistcoat itself. Especially adore these little curls and things which have been sculpted over the top which makes the divide between the hair and the face itself a lot less clear which is very good and once again makes the figure look generally a lot more natural. Just to finish off 
here is a close-up of all the accessories that you do of course get with this figure, which considering that the Eighth Doctor movie is in fact just one standalone movie as opposed to a whole era unlike all the other Doctors that have been released as a part of the series, with the exception of course of the War Doctor, they've got quite an impressive range of accessories, ranging from your regulars with the normal Doctor figures such as a TARDIS key and of course a select screwdriver, and a few rather unusual yet nice accessories in there at the same time as well, all of which have been painted and sculpted to an incredibly high quality and I'm definitely glad that I got the signature version as the plaque alongside this figure will look really nice when on display. I've been informed by Batman March that I have quite obviously got the hand on completely the wrong wrist on the 8th Doctor. It's obviously meant to be on the opposite side so yeah. Ignore that, I was too excited when unboxing this figure to even check if the hands are in the same or right socket. Oops. I suppose that is that. I hope you've enjoyed this video, it's been a little bit different to usual. I apologise if it's been a bit meandering and all over the place at times. Of course, naturally, I've been excited to open this product, it has been such a long wait. And I suppose that's what these unboxing videos are, aren't they? They're a first reaction to the product, what you like and what you dislike, and kind of just the natural emotions that you feel over the product itself at first glance. And overall, I am very happy with it. I think that this figure shows very, very clear improvements from Big Chief. I think that compared to their original releases, there has been lots of work done on this figure to turn it around. Originally, I must admit, I was a bit worried about it. There was a few moments, especially when the delays started to occur. Then we, of course, had the moving factory. I was concerned that this figure was going to not turn out as good as I hoped. And having it now in hand, I think that the tailoring is lovely, especially the waist cut, as I say, and the likeness is a definite improvement to some of the previous releases in the past. And I think the unusual thing with Big Chiefs is that regardless of what they release, there will always be a critical reaction online. And I think that it's very odd because regardless of what Big Chief do, there is always a lot of people being negative over the likenesses. Speaking as a person who has physically purchased this product at full recommended retail, purchased a signature edition, and had waited the vast majority of the pre-order time of this product, now I have it in hand. I'm happy, I'm happy with the product and I'm glad that I've paid the money for it. Yes, there will take a few moments to actually pose the costume itself, that is natural from having a costume that has been tailored. And one thing that I do believe I forgot to mention earlier is that it is nice to see this figure a lot more stiff in its points of articulation compared to some of the previous releases. It's a lot better to have a stiffer anatomics body on these figures as opposed to a loose one because that means it is much harder to pose because it will naturally just fall and won't stay in place. The figure seems a lot more strong and better in hand to hold and overall I'm happy with it. So if you want this product and you want the signature one I recommend buying it soon because the last time I checked I do believe there was around 15 or 20 of them remaining so these will sell out within the next few months if not in the next month. However there is still a few of the regular ones left which do not have the master urn and do not of course naturally have the signature but that said if you just want an 8th Doctor to add to your collection then this is pretty much the definitive version of the 8th Doctor that you can get. It's certainly the best and highest of detail probably that has been ever released on the market. I would go that far to say it's a wonderful piece of merchandise and I can't wait to spend the rest of the day gazing at it in awe. I'm not even lying, that is exactly what I am going to do. So thank you very much for watching this video. As I mentioned earlier, it has been a bit different to usual, so apologies if the quality has kind of dropped here and there, and it's not been as good as a review as per usual, because this isn't a review, it's just an unboxing to get my reaction of the product itself. Who knows, if this video does well, I may do more in the future, covering the upcoming releases from Big Chief. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it. I do, of course, stay tuned on those productions for brand new Doctor Who content every single week. So thanks for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.